Hey, this is Mr. Peterson. This is the screencast is about evidence for evolution. So here's the really big idea again, maybe the best idea in biology ever. Descent with modification, common ancestry, we all share a common root. So again, here's that illustration from Darwin's notebook uh, from his voyage on the Beagle. So I think maybe this, that's kind of what he was going for. So what's the evidence for that? What did Darwin have? Now, we have some other evidence available to us that Darwin didn't have, but this screencast is going to be about his evidence. So the middle 19th century, fossils. So fossils show that organisms have changed over time. And again, that was a new idea to lots of people still stuck in. The earth has never changed, hasn't moved. God created it that way. But fossils provide evidence for evolution. So here's a look at horses. Horses didn't always used to be big, huge, humongous animals. They were little tiny creatures that lived in the woods. Um, eventually they evolved all kinds of things to become grazers that live on grass. So different kinds of teeth, uh, open plains, so they, they're all of a sudden they're running on a single toe. Uh, and so they're faster that way. So fossils provide evidence for evolution. Here's, here's my kids at the American Museum of Natural History in front of a T-Rex. And so you can see there, Henry's the gangrene and William's the goofball with the smiley face and Kennedy sticking her tongue out. But anyway, dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Fossil evidence of change over time. Descent with modification, common ancestry. All right, so one of his ideas, besides fossils, that he had available to him was biogeography. And that came from his, his trip on the Beagle. So again, he's studying finches and he notices that populations can vary and that the, the birds, the finch, that were closer to the mainland, so the farthest to the east, they were more like the finches that they found in South America. And the ones that were farther west, they were a little bit different common ancestor, descent with modification, variations. All right, then we have embryology. Uh, so the business of looking at babies and making comparisons between babies uh, of organisms that are pretty closely related. And so we have sometimes, we have marine organisms. So here's a marine organism, here's a larvae. So this is, this is a small uh, baby creature that lives in the ocean. And the, the similarity in embryos, again, points to common ancestry. So this larvae, or larvae that look like this, they come from different organisms, but they look pretty similar, and they wind up being different organisms altogether. So there are larvae of the adult crabs and larvae of the barnacles in the adult form. That's pictures of those that their, their larvae look pretty similar. Now, they're not the same larvae that turn into crabs or barnacles, but they look pretty similar. So again, sharing a common ancestry, sharing a common genetic history, uh, but develop into different creatures altogether. So one that's mobile and one that's sessile, which means it's kind of stuck to things. So same, same looking larvae, but they wind up having different lifestyles altogether. So embryology is another, uh, another proof or evidence for evolution. Then we look at anatomy, and we look at homologous structures. So the word homologous uh, means the same, the same writing. So if we look at structures, look at the anatomy. Oh, look, at we've got a, a human arm, a seal limb, a bird wing, and a bat wing. Notice the colors. The colors show the same bone in mammals and birds. Crazy, so similar structures. Now they have different functions, right? We wish we could fly, but we can't. Um, but they show the same patterns. They show the same bone structures and the same pretty much arrangement of things in all of those organisms. Those are called homologous structures. So anatomy provides evidence for evolution. Uh, we also have analogous structures. So they have the same function, but they have different origins. So bats and flies have wings, but they don't come from the same structures at all, right? So the wings are separate for uh, the wings are separate for a fly. They have legs, and the 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 wings of a bat come from their upper limbs. 
So different origins, they're analogous. They do the same job, but they have, they have different origins. So just wanted to point that out. We can also get some evidence from structural patterns. So vestigial structures. So for example, ostriches. Why the heck do ostriches have wings? They don't use them for anything. They're vestigial. They're kind of left over from when those, their ancestors would fly. What about whales? Why the heck does a whale have a pelvis? It doesn't have any legs to hang off of there, but it still has a pelvis. Evidence that whales came from mammals that at one time lived on land. Crazy to think about, whales living on land. Oh, they were different, but we'll, we'll probably talk about that at some point. All right, and body plans. If we look at body plans, here's a bunch of embryos. So human embryos on the right and fish embryos on the left, look at the similarities. Again, structural pattern, pretty much the same segmentation, head at the front, tail at the end, limbs coming off there somewhere. Yeah, we wind up with a different product, but again, evidence for common ancestry, looking at body plans that we find in nature, especially vertebrates, you know, guys like us, spines, we have backbones. So anyway, evidence for evolution, lots of different things that Darwin had available to him. Um, genetics, did he have genetics? didn't know anything about genetics, that's another screencast. Hope that helps.